right, in our book review section, you can share your thoughts with us on some of the books that you're currently reading or have read or those you'd like to read. All you have to do is simply to email Instagram or tweet us a picture and relevant caption of your pick of the week must read for 2017, your current read and the one you were hoping was going to be great but turned out to be rather disappointing. Tweet us at Morning Life SABC or use the hashtag Morning Life SABC. Instagram us using the handle at Morning Life SABC or email morninglife at sabc.co.za. All right then, the award-winning thriller authors uh, Michael Sears and Stanley Trollope have re released the, the much-anticipated sixth book of the detective Kubu mystery series titled Dying to Live under the pen name Michael Stanley. Now the series that takes us on a roller coaster life journey of Detective Kubu as he tackles and tries to solve issues of crime, corruption and murder in the country of Botswana. Now their previous titles in the series include The Carrion Death, The Second Death of Good Luck Tinubu, Death of the Mantis, Deadly Harvest and A Death in the Family. And now to tell us more about this thrilling series, I'm joined in studio by co-author of the series, Michael Sears. A very good morning to you, Michael, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Now, for the benefit of those who don't know much about this book, can you take us through what the Detective Kubu series is all about? Well, Kubu is a detective in the CID in, uh, in Khabarone, in Botswana. The series is set in Botswana. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a detective who investigates mainly serious crimes, murders, uh, armed robberies and things of this nature. Mm. And our books have sort of followed his exploits from when he more or less started as an assistant superintendent. Okay. And the backstories of the books are sort of related to different Southern African issues which are different because it's set in Botswana rather than South Africa, mm. but also of general interest in, in the region. Blood Diamonds, the, uh, yeah. the Sand People, uh, refugees from Zimbabwe, uh, Muti murders, and uh, in, this, in this latest one, mm -hmm. Echo Piracy is yeah. one of the backstories. Now, you've worked with Stanley Trollope on this series, so can you brief us on the, your working relationship as to who does what? Okay, well, uh, we usually ask that, of course, it's a good question. <laughs> and uh, actually, quite a few authors are two or even three people. Um, one, one discovers, although they use a single pen name. What we do is we, we work together on the plot. We sort of uh, outline the, the general structure that the, that the story is going to follow together. Usually we're in Botswana, traveling around, seeing the places and so on. It's, mm. it's tough, but somebody has to do it. Somebody so, has uh, to do yeah. it, yeah. So we do that. And, uh, and then once we've got a general outline of what we want to do, one of us will take a certain section of the book, maybe a chapter or two chapters, write a first draft of that. We send it usually by email to the other one and he goes through it and makes changes and corrects it and makes comments and then sends it back. Mm. And then it bounces back and forth like a ping pong ball sure. uh, between us until eventually we, uh, we're happy with All that right. section. Now in the sixth edition, Dying to Live, what is Detective Kubu trying to uncover in this particular edition? Well, what happens in this book is right at the beginning they discover the, the body of a, of a man, an old uh, bushman or sand person, uh, in the Kalahari. And uh, first they think it's just that he's died of old age or it's accidental, but then they discover mm -hmm. that actually it seems as though it's more likely to be murder. Uh, and so the murder is there, but then they discover something else very curious about it, which is in the autopsy, it turns out that although he looks very old, white hair, wrinkled skin, uh, mm. his organs, is internally he looks like a young man. Mm. And they find a, a bullet uh, lodged in his uh, thigh, which actually is from a black powder gun. So they can't understand how that got there and there's no scar. Mm. And then this leads into... Uh, a lot of different issues, drug companies trying to explore for something mysterious that can heal or extend life, um, rhino horn smugglers, Chinese gangsters, it's, it's all in there making life difficult for Kubu. Yeah, yeah. All right, when the Bushman's body was stolen from the morgue and uh, a local witch doctor was reported missing, that particular instance made our minds to race around the issue of Muti. So how did it go about, uh, how did it go about you know, researching this practice? 
Yes, well, our, our uh, f- fourth book, which is called Deadly Harvest, the, the, the whole theme is, is Muti, and it's actually based on a true story from uh, Machudi uh, in Botswana of a young schoolgirl who was abducted and uh, then killed, and her, her body was cut up for, for, uh, for black magic. Uh, so we spent quite a bit of time investigating that and also reading a lot, speaking to the police. Uh, unfortunately, it's quite a widespread practice, so a lot of people know quite a bit about it. And it's very hard to, to stamp out because people are scared of the witch doctors and, uh, and of course the victims are not related to the, to the murderers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's much easier to trace a murderer when there's uh, some sort of relationship, some sort of obvious motive uh, why that particular person would be chosen. Yeah, just a quick one. Uh, towards the end, Detective Kubu uncovers a ring of, uh, you know, a ring of uh, rhino, rhino poachers. Mm-hmm. And this particular instance, it makes us say, you know, it, this should never end. This should never end. How do you manage to, <laughs> to, to achieve such a feeling in all your series? Well, I think uh, one of the things is that we don't, when, when I said we, we sort of outline the plot, but we don't plan the details of it. <laughs> so it's a surprise to us as well. Right. And uh, in that fourth book that I mentioned before, we didn't actually know how we were going to catch the, the murderer until right in the last chapter. So it's a surprise to us. So we hope that the tension we feel as we're thinking this book must end, <laughs> but how is it going to end, also comes across to you. Right. All right, Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Hey. Thank you. All right, that is Michael Sears. Uh, he's an author that has worked in both academia and, and business. And uh, he was speaking to us about the release of his latest uh, uh, called Dying to Live that he co-authored with his partner in crime, Stanley Trollope. Oh. All right, let's now take a look at some of the tweets that have been coming through about some of you, of some of the books that you've been reading. All right, one, one viewer says, A year's supply of everyday wisdom beautifully captured. Now, the book is called The Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo. Unite for Wealth says, A look at limiting beliefs Africans have towards building wealth and solutions. That's the wealth paradigm shift. All right, thank you so much for the tweets that have been coming through. Uh, do send us your emails, your views, and about uh, what you've been reading. Uh, at Morning Live SABC, use the hashtag at Morning Live. All right, Morning Live takes a break, and I will be right back.